Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss the topic role of microbes in the biodegradation of environmental contaminants. This is a very important topic that we have to discuss. So we are going to look at background, the objectives for this presentation, then what microbes are, then the meaning of biodegradation. We also have a look at some biodegradable environmental contaminants. Then we will go straight to how these microbes degrade contaminants. And we conclude. Background. We say the quality of life on Earth is linked to the overall quality of the environment. Now, contaminants from the environment have always been a serious issue globally. And these contaminants involve contamination to soil, water, and the air. So the United States has spent billions of dollars trying to clean up contaminated groundwater and soils in the past decades. Microorganisms can be used to destroy these contaminants that we are talking about or transform them into less harmful forms. Now, how are microbes able to do this? These microbes possess enzymes that allow them to use contaminants for their own growth, that's in the form of food and also for reproduction. Objectives. Our first objective is to understand the term biodegradation and also to know some microbes involved in this biodegradation process and to know some biodegradable environmental contaminants and to know how microbes degrade contaminants. Microbes, what are microbes? So microbes can be isolated from almost any environmental condition, being it cold temperatures, extreme heat, desert conditions, water, with an excess of oxygen or in anaerobic conditions with the presence of hazardous compounds. The main requirements are an energy source and a carbon source. Bacteria, protista, fungi, they are all microorganisms that can degrade contaminants. And we have aerobic microbes, examples are pseudomonas, acalogens, Fringomonas, Rhodococcus, Brevibacillus, Corinebacterium, etc. So these microbes have often been reported to degrade pesticides and hydrocarbons. Anaerobic microbes. Anaerobic bacteria are not as frequently used as aerobic bacteria. And examples of anaerobic bacteria are Actinomyces, Bifidobacterium, Clostridium, Propionibacterium, etc. And we also have Ligninolytic fungi. Then these are fungi such as the white rod fungus. They have the ability to degrade an extremely diverse range of persistent or toxic environmental contaminants. So what is biodegradation? Biodegradation is the process by which organic substances are broken down into smaller compounds by microorganisms. And biodegradable matter is general organic material such as plants and animal matter and also other substances originating from living organisms or artificial material that are similar enough to plant and animal matter. Biodegradation can be achieved through one, natural attenuation. And in natural attenuation, the contaminants are reduced by native or local microorganisms in the environment without any human augmentation or human intervention. So you allow the microbes themselves to degrade these contaminants without helping them in any way. Then we also have biostimulation, where nutrients and oxygen are supplied to local or native microorganisms to improve their effectiveness 
and to accelerate the process of biodegradation. And the third one is called bioaugmentation. With bioaugmentation, more efficient supplemental microbes are added to the native microbes to degrade the target contaminants. So you introduce foreign microbes, uh, which in ideal ways are not found in the natural environment, and they come in to help the native or the local microorganisms. So mixed microbial communities have the most powerful biodegradative potential. Factors required for biodegradation. The existence of a microbial population capable of degrading the pollutants. The availability of contaminants to the microbial population. Then environmental factors. Example, the type of soil, the temperature, pH, the presence of oxygen or other electron acceptors, and also nutrients. Some biodegradable environmental contaminants. One, hydrocarbons. These are organic compounds whose structures consist of hydrogen and carbon. Example is propane. And hydrocarbons can be degraded under aerobic and also anaerobic conditions. Throughout the world, there are over 70 genera of microbes that are known to degrade hydrocarbons. So, Pseudomonal, Brevibacillus, Bacillus, Corynebacterium, etc. They are examples of uh, microorganisms that can degrade hydrocarbons. We also have polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs. These are hydrophobic organic contaminants, widely found in air, soil, and sediments. And the major source of PAH pollution is industrial production. These polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons can sorb to organic rich soils and sediments. They then accumulate in they can also accumulate in fish and other aquatic organisms and may be transferred to humans through seafood consumption. And examples of microorganisms that can degrade these PAHs are Pseudomonas, Mycobacterium, Corynobacterium, Eromonas, Rhodococcus, and Bacillus. Polychlorinated biphenyls (PCBs). These are mixtures of synthetic organic chemicals. Industrial and commercial applications, including electrical, heat transfer, and hydraulic equipment, as plastic sizes in pins, plastics, and rubber products, in pigments, dyes, and carbonless copy paper. So. This is where we can find some of these PCBs. Then PCBs are toxic compounds that could act as endocrine disruptors and cause cancer. So they are very dangerous. Examples of microorganisms that can degrade PCBs are Pseudomonas, Becoderia, Rastonia, etc. Pesticides. What are pesticides? These are substances or mixture of substances intended for preventing destroying, repelling, or mitigating any pest. Pesticides which are rapidly degraded are called non-persistent, while those which resist degradation are termed persistent pesticides. And, and examples of bacteria or microorganisms that can degrade pesticides are bacillus, staphylococcus, etc. Dyes. Dyes are used in textile, rubber products, paper, printing, color photography, pharmaceutical, cosmetics, and many other industries. Biodegradation of dyes can occur under aerobic and also anaerobic conditions. Proteus, Pseudomonas, and Enterococcus are examples of microorganisms that can degrade dyes. Heavy metals. We say unlike organic contaminants, the metals cannot be destroyed but must either be converted to a more stable form or removed. Examples of microorganisms that can convert heavy metals to a more stable form or remove them are Bacillus, Brevibacterium, Acidityobacillus, etc. Now, we move to how these microbes are able to degrade contaminants. Microbial transformation of organic contaminants normally occurs because 
the organism can use the contaminant for their own growth and reproduction. Organic contaminants serve two purposes for the organisms. One, they serve as a source of carbon, which is one of the basic building blocks of new cell constituents. And organic contaminants also provide electrons, which the organisms can extract to obtain energy for their growth and reproduction. Microbes get energy from the contaminants by breaking chemical bonds and transferring electrons from the contaminants to an electron acceptor such as oxygen. The type of chemical reaction is called oxidation reduction reaction. Thus, the organic contaminant is oxidized, the technical term for losing electrons, and also the chemical that gained the electron is reduced. So the contaminant is called the electron donor, while the electron recipient is called the electron acceptor. These two main materials, as the electron donor and electron acceptors, are essential for cell growth. And the first process through which microbes are able to degrade contaminants is called aerobic respiration. So many microbes like humans use molecular oxygen, that's O2, as the electron acceptor. The process of destroying organic co compounds with the aid of oxygen is what we call aerobic respiration. Now, in aerobic respiration, microbes use oxygen to oxidize parts of the carbon in the contaminant to carbon dioxide, with the rest of the carbon used to produce new cells. So, we can see from our diagram here this is the organic contaminant now uh, it is used in the production of new cells and oxygen here is serving as an electron acceptor in the process the oxygen gets reduced and once the oxygen gets reduced it produces water Nitrogen, phosphorus, and other required nutrients from the contaminant are also used in production of new cells. Another process is anaerobic respiration. Now, many microorganisms can exist without oxygen using a process called anaerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, inorganic chemicals like nitrates, sulfates, metals such as iron 3 and manganese 4 or even CO2, that's carbon dioxide, can play the role of oxygen, accepting electrons from the degraded contaminant. We also have another protocol called inorganic compounds serving as electron donors. So in addition to organisms that use inorganic chemicals as electron acceptors for anaerobic respiration, other organisms can use inorganic molecules as electron donors ammonium, nitrate, reduced iron, reduced manganese, and A2S are some of these uh, inorganic compounds. Fermentation. With fermentation, the organic contaminant serves as both the electron donor and also the electron acceptor. Through a series of internal electron transfers, which is catalyzed by the microorganisms, the organic contaminant is converted to innocuous compounds such as fermentation products. Acetate, propionate, ethanol, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide are some of these fermentation products. Secondary utilization and co metabolism. Now, in some cases, microbes can transform contaminants, even though the transformation reaction yields little or no benefit to the cell, and this is called secondary utilization. A special case of secondary utilization is what we call co-metabolism. So what is co-metabolism? In co-metabolism, the transformation of the contaminant is just an incidental reaction which is catalyzed by enzymes involved in normal cell metabolism or special detoxification reactions. So we are going to look at uh, a tale of two West pills in the history of the United States where microbes were used in biodegradation. One is the Exxon Valdez spill in Prince William Sound. 
in March 24th, or on March 24th, 1989, the oil tanker Eson Vardes ran aground on the Bly Reef in Prince William Sound, Alaska, spilling an estimated 11 million gallons, that's 42 million liters of crude oil. And they use microorganisms in cleaning up this uh, oil contamination. So oil contamination, microorganisms can be used to clean up this mess. And it has been done before. And this is a typical example. The second one is the BP Deepwater Horizon oil leak in the Gulf of Mexico. On April 20th, 2010, high pressure oil and gas escaped from BP's Deepwater Horizon Exploratory well, in Mississippi, Canyon Block 252, which was located 77 kilometers offshore. In the subsequent fire and explosions, 11 men tragedy lost their lives. Wow, that's sad. The deep water horizon drain rig burned and ultimately sank in 1,500 meters of water two days later. The oil release was estimated at 4.9 million barrels. And in this case also, microorganisms were used in the cleanup process. In conclusion, what can we say? Microbial activities are very important for the renewal of our environment. That's for the purpose of biodegradation. Once all the necessary requirements, these are very important, all the necessary requirements has to be met. And once all the necessary requirements are met, microorganisms provide a cost-effective and safe way of getting rid of environmental contaminants. So thank you for following this lecture. If you like this lecture, do well to subscribe to my channel for subsequent ones. Thank you.